Bishop Goodpastor from the Western North Carolina Conference, it's a joy to be able to share ministry with uh, all of our friends, our sisters and brothers and colleagues in the North Carolina Conference, and Bishop Ward and I to be able to uh, visit in each other's conferences this year and share together some of the ministry that we're having together and working together as partners in the state of North Carolina on behalf of God's mission in North Carolina. Uh, my name is Hope Morgan Ward. I'm the bishop in the Raleigh area, eastern North Carolina. As I like to say, I have the beaches, Bishop Goodpastor has the mountains, and we share the Piedmont. That's right. uh, North Carolina is my home state. I, I, am, um, I was born and reared in eastern North Carolina, and so uh, we were delighted to be assigned forward to North Carolina. Because yeah, I love your image. We're not going back. We're, we're going forward. <laughs> well, in the eight years in which we were in Mississippi, so much happened here uh, in the reconfigurations, in the, the rethinking of the way that uh, resources are being deployed and, and looking uh, toward the future. And it's been wonderful to reconnect with that and to be assigned forward to a place where we have long history and have connections and relationships with people and uh, to acknowledge the, the great work that's been done in envisioning a different sort of future. And uh, between our two conferences, we have 1,900 local congregations and about a half a million United Methodist people. You know, it's really exciting to think about how many churches, how many people, and how we can leverage that mm -hmm. as we think about uh, half a million people uh, serving, working across the state of North Carolina and other parts of the world. Uh, partnering together to really make a difference for, for Christ in the world. In literally every community, in rural places, in urban places, in places um, where there are many resources and in places where there are very few resources. Uh, we really do have great, great potential uh, as a movement of we really Wesleyan do. Christians. I, and you know, the, the whole new emphasis in the Book of Discipline with district superintendents being uh, missional strategists for the, for the district really led us to think about what does that mean? And knowing that the two conferences were reducing the number of districts, uh, an opportunity for us to, to go into retreat together. We've had Gil Rendell meet with us twice. We're anticipating more. And uh, the whole image of us working together, prayer partners together, but making a difference. We've started talking uh, together about how, what we can do in the lives of children uh, through our schools. And again, 1,900 churches, half a million Methodists, we can impact a lot of children. Uh, we have a heritage of having worked together in ways across the years, and we give thanks for that. It uh, helps us know, it, it actually builds our confidence uh, in knowing that we have in the state of North Carolina a character and a reputation among other Christians and in the community for a particular uh, emphasis in our, in our mission, our work with children, our work in disaster response, our work in mission in the world. And we want to grow that together and be mutually strengthened as we encourage one another. I know uh, all of you in the North Carolina Conference have been uh, working very hard uh, through your huddles and, and your emphasis on discipleship and growing together. Uh, we've been talking about how churches come together in missional networks. And so as bishops, we have an opportunity also to model for the whole state that uh, we're, we're not actually working in silos here, but what happens in Raleigh and what happens in Charlotte and Greensboro and Greenville uh, really makes a difference. And we have a chance to, uh, to join hands and link to make a difference. It's a way of embodying the connection. Uh, our discipline describes the connection as a web of interactive relationships. And it is um, tempting to become siloed. It's easy to fall back into those kinds of patterns. Uh, and as our conferences connect with one another, uh, we continually remind ourselves and teach all those within our conferences to link, to connect, mm -hmm. Uh, and to be Wesleyan. Uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, we have a history of this, and certainly in disaster response, because um, while you serve the conference that has that exposed coastline over there, um, and I know Western North Carolina has been a part of that, there was a history with campus ministry as well uh, that we were sharing together. So now in the 21st century, we're, we're looking at forging some new ways of working together. 
an example of the, the way that our conversation together has, has been extremely helpful to us is the conversations that we've had even beyond our cabinets with our campus ministers. Mm -hmm. the, the wonderful um, new church plant that you have at Pfeiffer University uh, helped us become more creative as we appointed a pastor to the Wilmington area. The churches in the Wilmington area wanted to come together and support together a new campus ministry uh, for United Methodist students on the campus of UNC Wilmington. And so again, that synergy of great things happening in Pfeiffer, uh, helping us be more creative in the way we thought about campus ministry as we move toward this annual conference. And, and amazingly, I just had a conversation with our campus minister at Appalachian State who's uh, really concerned about students who graduate out of strong Wesley Foundation programs and campus ministries in both sides of the conference and nowhere to go. And so he's beginning to dream about how can we leverage our students who graduate from our colleges, been involved in campus ministries, who may go to App State but end up living in Cary, or who may go to UNC Chapel Hill and end up living in Asheville. How can we work uh, ways that we start churches or we find new faith communities so that we take advantage of what they've been learning? In the last year, the Wesley Foundation at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill uh, has moved, having sold their building, which uh, they've had for right. many, many years, uh, have moved um, up on Franklin Street, and they are meeting uh, right on Franklin Street in a, a second level above the, some of the shops on Franklin Street, which is a great image for the church, moving out where the people are, right. rather than being in a building, in, encapsulated, uh, being right in the middle of the action. So one of the things that has excited me about uh, your being in Raleigh is to renew uh, that close working relationship. It started with Katrina and uh, the disaster that, that we had in the conferences we were serving previously. And I'll never forget the phone call that came uh, probably less than a week after Katrina and you inviting me to Jackson uh, along with our colleague from Louisiana and saying, let's just sit down and figure this thing out together. And so having you in Raleigh uh, just gives an opportunity to continue that kind of relationship between the two conferences. Hopefully no more disasters. Hopefully not, hopefully not. However, um, we in North Carolina have experienced wonderful partnership in, um, through the years when we have had those kind of natural disasters across our state. And uh, it's been, it's a lasting memory. And it also gives us confidence, the kind of confidence we have when we know that we are partners together and friends and mutually supportive. And so it, it, it really did just feel natural when, when we were able to get a grant from a foundation and invite Gil Rendell to come talk with our superintendents about this new world that we were living in to say, hey, let's include North Carolina and because you're going through the same thing we are. And Gil's just done a great job pulling the two mm -hmm. conferences, uh, the 16 superintendents, the two of us together to think about how do we live into this new world? Living with the questions together is a, a really wonderful experience. It's tempting to try to find answers, but as Gil continually tells us, reminds us, to not bring closure too quickly to the questions right. that are before us, but yeah. to just live with them a while. And it's been very helpful to have a, a, a conversation partner, both to pose questions, to, to uh, share tentative thoughts, uh, and to get that kind of, of uh, objective feedback from a step away for both you in the Western Conference and for us in our conference as we, as we figure out this future that God's giving us. In both of our conferences, we've reconfigured to be more missional. That's the whole reason. The whole point, uh, the whole point is to, to turn toward the edges, to turn, turn our churches and our life outward. As Francis Asbury said to the early Methodists, to take the resources from the center to the circumference mm -hmm. and where the church meets the world. And so we want very much to be faithful in doing that. We're bound together in a great state. And we, we have a chance. We are. And we have this wonderful heritage of being one of those places where Bishop Asbury rode right. and gathered and preached under the trees and visited in the homes of, of Methodists. And we have a rich, long tradition, but an even stronger future because the Wesleyan way of grace, of loving grace and sharing grace and experiencing grace and watching for God's latest graceful movement is a gift to the world. And I really think it's a, a message and a gift for the people of North Carolina, not just United Methodists, 
but an opportunity for all of our churches and all of our people uh, to extend that grace to a, a state that's continuing to grow and to become more and more uh, diversified and the demographics just keep telling us that people are coming here and we need to be ready to offer that grace the way Asbury did as he rode through these mountains. That's right. I look forward to the ways in which uh, we'll work with children in the world, both in our communities, connecting our congregations with children in public schools. There's, there's tremendous energy for that. So many teachers and principals and school staff folks are members of our churches they really and are. we and we all went to school <laughs> and we have children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews and neighbors and friends um, in our schools and so this connect is a natural way to connect with all God's children and amazing what difference we can make in the life of a child and how different that child's life can be long term just with that impact that we have. I, the, the whole emphasis on uh, the, the Give Five, Read Five program and how many children lose grade levels over the summer if they don't continue to read or continue to keep that education level going. Again, we have that opportunity with all of our churches to, to uh, change their lives for the better down the road. One of our churches were, uh, they were describing the way in which they were engaged and they were describing how 14 of, of their members were um, reading to children in schools. Wow. And, and so we commented about that and said, well, that, that's really great. Maybe others will. And they said, you got to understand, we only have 14 members. Wow. A hundred percent. You can't beat that. You can't beat it. And it is an engagement that churches can have, whether they are 14 members, 400 members, or 4,000 members. Well, and I, I hope when we come to the end of this quadrennium, so that would be mid-2016, that we can look back and say, look at the lives of children that have been impacted. So these third graders that are third graders this year who are going into sixth or seventh grade by then are reading at grade level and, and have hope for their future. And I think if we measure anything, we measure what kind of impact we have on their lives, the lives of their families. Absolutely. And we also look forward in this quadrennium to increasing the number of children that we're helping globally, particularly through uh, Zoe, uh, with our work in empowerment ministries in Africa. Uh, and that work, the need is very expansive and our resources are expansive. And just good things are going to happen. United Methodists, we keep reminding ourselves we, we do have ministry right where we live, mm -hmm. but we're also part of the world, and there are uh, millions of children who need us as well. Our work with children in schools and our work with children in Africa are two examples of many, many ways in which we will continue to be partners in ministry. So we look forward to that very much, all that God will do among us. And it's been good to share these two conferences together. And uh, Bishop Ward, I'm just so grateful for you um, initiating some of that conversation and uh, the opportunity to be together. And we look forward again to how God is going to use all the United Methodist churches across North Carolina to make a huge difference in this world. Making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world is going to start right here in North Carolina. Amen.